Good evening, everyone. I'm Trajet Perez, and I have the pleasure of serving as your Dean of Students. So welcome to, woo! All right. Welcome to all of our brand new students. Uh, this is our first year convocation. We're excited. The semester just started. This is a new chapter that just began. And so I know a lot of you are probably excited. Maybe feeling a little different than you were a few weeks ago before classes started. Anybody feeling a little different already? Yeah, no? Anyone struggling with math? Yeah. <laughs> that's usually the one, right? Um, but that's okay. That's part of it. Uh, so today is really just a little bit to give you an introduction to some of the many services that we offer. Welcome you officially to the Shark family. I love that we have so many family members. Yes, give yourselves a round of applause. We're now part of the Shark family. And I absolutely love that we have so many parents and family members in the room. So a little trick or tip or something I should mention. So your college student, right? This is for the families. They're now here. And some parents, maybe some aunties and grandparents want to keep holding on, right? Any of the students in here feel like mom and dad are still trying to hold on? I see a lot of yes turning to, to the person beside you. That's okay, that's okay. So part of what we do is we want to encourage a little bit of that independence. We want you to you know, kind of become your own person, start to kind of get a feel for who you are, who you want to become, what are the goals that you want to accomplish. But at the same time, we really welcome the support of those parents and those family members at the same time. So we know that there is a little bit of a balance. We don't want the parent to do everything for you. We really don't, so mom and dad, we don't want you to do everything for your child, right? They need to start spreading their wings and doing what they need to do. But we feel that it's very fortunate to have that parental and that familiar, you know, family support. It is important because you are gonna need it. And some of our, our students don't have that uh, privilege. And so if those of you who do, take advantage of it because it's gonna help you through. They're gonna be your biggest cheerleaders. They're gonna be your biggest advocates. And the one thing we definitely wanna to want to see all of you at graduation in a couple of years when you get your, your degree. And they're gonna be cheering you on, right? So that's, that's definitely the goal. So before we get started, I just really, I wanted to say hello and I wanted everyone to know, uh, at least know who I was. I have seen some of you at orientation. Uh, some of you have made your way to my office a little bit about my office, the Dean of Students office. Um, unlike high school, some people say, oh, you're like the principal's office. Um, not really. Uh, it's sort of, I'm really here to advocate, make sure that you're getting a good experience while you're here to be able to get the support that you need throughout your journey here, whether it be through classroom, through advisement, through your scholarships, financial aid, or just navigating, trying to figure out how to make it to the next semester and such. So. Uh, my office is located in building one. Uh, that is, you know, the main building on the third floor. You guys can come and see me anytime, uh, share something fun, something positive, or if you have a concern or you have a, an issue or something that needs assistance, we're happy to help you with as well. Um, so definitely know that we are here to support you even though you have a great network. And the best tip I can give you is making sure to take advantage of that network. Take advantage of your senior advisors who are going to be doing everything to be your biggest cheerleader as you get through and to help you navigate. So a couple of questions, I'm gonna put you guys on the spot. Um, anybody know when we first opened our doors as Miami-Dade College, when the college first opened its doors? That's a little trivia question. 1918? A little later. 1960, who said that? I heard that over here. All right, 1960, yes, we opened our doors in 1960. So we just celebrated our 58th birthday last week on September 6th, so you may have seen the IMMDC day. Yeah, that's right, 58 years. Awesome. Does anyone know how many students approximately Miami-Dade College has already served in that short time? Because 58 years is, is a short time for some colleges. We're young, but boy, we're mighty. We're very mighty. So, any ideas of how many students we may have already served in that time frame? Six million. Six? I heard it over here. Two million. Who said two million students in the middle? Right? It's actually more than that. We're already way past two million. But you are part of a very, very large MDC family. So, that is something to ponder. We are 
one of the largest colleges in the nation. Uh, we serve a lot of students and we actually graduate the largest number of minority students across the nation. So that is something we're very, very proud of. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Uh, fun fact before I turn it over and officially start the program. Who knows the name of our mascot? The shark. The shark. <laughs> well, that's what he is. <laughs> but who knows his name? Finn. Yes, and that's Finn with a double N. Okay, very important. You gotta know, you gotta know that, right? He's our mascot. He's fun. You might see him around. Uh, you may not see him today. He's usually sleeping at night, but you may see him throughout if you haven't already seen him. So take, you know, keep an eye out for him. If you do see him on campus, make sure you take a, a photo and put it on social media and hashtag NBC North because we give prizes sometimes to those of us that do. So make sure you keep an eye out for him um, and don't feed the iguanas. So no, <laughs> or the shark or the fish. All right, anyway, we're gonna get this wonderful program started. I officially wanna welcome to the podium one of our peer mentors who you probably, many of you may already know, Miss Tracy Witherspoon. like an eternity getting from my seat up here uh, to the podium. However, um, it is my pleasure to welcome each and every one of you here this evening to our first year convocation. Give yourselves a round of applause for being present. Here. I am Malou Harrison, as you heard, and I serve as the campus president here at the North Campus. And just looking out into this very full auditorium, this Lehman Theater, really fills me with a lot of warmth. And particularly tonight, um, I join in welcoming all of our new students to the North Campus. Will you stand so that we can take a good look at you, please? Don't be shy. Please stand up. <laughs> more and I'd like to thank you for selecting the North Campus of Miami Dade College as your college of choice. Before I go any further I'd like to also welcome the family members and I'm not going to ask you to stand uh, but I do want to tell you that I'm truly pleased to see so many family members here this evening. Let me say that your student, your son, your daughter, your grandson, your granddaughter, your niece, your nephew, whomever you're here with tonight supporting cannot be successful on this college journey without you. I'm gonna say it one more time. Your student, who is now our student, cannot be successful without you on this journey, this college journey. And I'm so happy to see you here this evening at the beginning of their educational experience here at the North Campus, and I look forward to seeing you at graduation as well. 
And I can tell you that along the way, between now and graduation, you can expect, and students I'm speaking to you now, an outstanding experience here at the North Campus. But that experience will only be outstanding if you put forth full commitment, if you're willing to work hard, if you're willing to ask questions, if you're willing to study much more than your faculty members even expect of you, and if you're willing to be engaged. So there are a lot of factors that go into being successful at the North Campus, but I can tell you that if you're willing to do all of what I just described, we, the faculty, staff, and administrators will be right there beside you, behind you, supporting you and helping you to achieve all of your dreams. So do we have a contract? Yes. I texted him earlier. Do we have a contract? Yes. You will be working hard, you'll be persevering, you'll be very engaged, you will make sure that those assignments are done with quality, right? That you spend the time doing that. You will also sacrifice a Saturday night from going out to a party with friends to perhaps stay at home and study, right, a little bit more so that you can get those high grades so that you can really learn the material and not just memorize it, right? Isn't that important? Yes. And why is that so important, that we truly try to achieve deep learning and not just memorizing facts? Who can tell me? Why is that important? Yes, stand up for me, please. Every single thing that you learn, uh, whether you're coming straight out of high school, whether you've taken a break in between, everything uh, that you learn uh, in school, in college, can and will serve you well in real life. And so we want you to really understand um, what you are learning. We want you to be able to uh, understand the application of the theory that you're learning in class to real life. And I can tell you that our classes here at the North Campus are not merely uh, that of theory. We certainly make an intentional and purposeful effort to help you to understand how every single thing you are learning in all of your classes, in all of the programs, connect in a very real way to life and how they will serve you well no matter what aspect of your career, your social life, your family life, you might uh, be experiencing. So this is the place to be, I assure you. Anything that you aspire to be, anything that you aspire to learn, anything that you aspire to be engaged in, anything that you aspire to initiate, you will be able to do it right here at the North Campus. And if that's not the case, do come and see me. Um, I'm located in building one on the third floor. And you know, if, if we don't have that opportunity here, we can certainly create it. It will not be the first time that a student has come to us with an outstanding idea that we really had not pondered on before. And we said, you know what? We want to support you in helping you to uh, initiate that idea and execute it for the good of the community for the good of the, a group of students, or what have you. And so with that, I'd like to welcome you here to the North Campus. You have a family here. You have a family of faculty, of advisors, of mentors, of peer mentors, like Ms. Weatherspoon, mm -hmm. and others who are here for the sole purpose of making sure that you are successful, making sure that you, in fact, can and will realize your dreams. So count on us, call on us, visit us, make sure that you are expanding your network of those on campus uh, who know you. Uh, I challenge each and every one of you to come by my office. 
without an appointment. And if I'm there, we will sit down and talk. And I promise you that. Do we have a deal? Yes. Wonderful. Welcome to the North Campus. May you be extremely successful. I will see you along the way. I will see you on campus. And I will see you at graduation as well. Thank you. life-changing decision to go to college. This is not a small decision. And I want you guys to give yourselves one more time yeah. another round of applause for making that decision. By you. So I am one of the senior academic advisors and we have Mr. Miguel Murphy here as well. You guys probably have seen us during orientation. Uh, so on behalf of the advising and career services, we welcome you again, once again tonight. Uh, we are here to really help you through your college journey. That's what we're here to do. We are here to ensure that you're successful, that all your goals and aspirations are able to be reached. Uh, so that is our goal here um, as senior advisors. And I won't go too much into the details. I know you guys know all about us. You spent four hours in orientation with us yes. not long ago. Uh, but I do have a question before I turn it over to Mr. Murphy. So it's your first quiz of your college years, I guess. Can any, it's, it might be a trick question. Can anyone tell me when does spring 2000, <coughs> you cheated. <laughs> yes, yeah, so spring 2019 registration actually started already on Monday. That was September 10th. And how many of you have registered? I won't, you, I won't put you on the spot. Oh, a lot of you, good job, good job. If you have not yet registered, please do so. If you are not sure of what you need, uh, please contact us. This is what we're here for. And now I will turn it over to Mr. Murphy. So, how many of you have represented Mr. Murphy this evening? graduation, commencement. It's one of my favorite activities um, on uh, campus and uh, at the end of the spring term. And I've gone to so many, more than a, you know, 10 of them. And so I hope to see all of you all at that end mark, um, spring of 2020. All right, so we're in 2018 and you're like, you, you're already talking about 2020. And so to help with that process, right, how many of you applied for fast for this? Many of you, right? So on October 1st, right, it's the season to renew that for the 2019-2020 uh, academic year. So that would be my tip number one, that on October 1st, set your agendas, put it on your calendar, and if you don't, you know, I'll send you an email. It'll say, hi, Hector. Uh, you need to sign up for FASPRA, www.fasper.gov. You know, we'll give you all of those uh, links to, to make sure that it's Another tip that I want to share, many of your academic plans, we work diligently to complete for the spring term, but 
thinking of your transfer institution and also the programs that we have here. We have a number of uh, baccalaureate uh, programs that you can consider. And so we want to meet with you to sort of map out the second year. I know for some of you who uh, are working with me, we did uh, your full, who got a full two-year plan uh, so far? Awesome. So the rest of you, you know, beginning next week, uh, we're going to kick into full gear. We're going to have uh, group advising sessions and one-on-one -on -one sessions for you to get that, those plans uh, completed so that you know specifically what you need to do, not just for the spring and the summer of your first year, but fall of um, 2019 and spring of 2020 and perhaps summer. But I trust that everyone is going to aim for the spring of 2020. So on May, such and it's usually May 4th, 5th, or 5th, my grandmother's birthday. Uh, yes, we can mention that it falls under. So it's a special time uh, for me. Another tip, apply for scholarships, all right? www.mbc.edu forward slash scholarship. It's not something that comes in the moment. It's something that you have to work towards. And so we have a number of grants that you can get and apply to work on campus, work study, right? And also study abroad. I know uh, one of our groups, the Minorities of the Future, and I see my colleague, Mr. Arjona, one of his members went to Prague over the summer, and that was very, very inspirational. So we want to see a number of you taking um, advantage of those opportunities. So I won't lecture. Uh, you had four hours of orientation in the summer. It, it, you know, it's with great pride that I see all of you beyond you know, the 100% refund date and the Florida residency and the whole admissions process. And so now it's really time to get into the academics. If you need help, we're always there. I usually say it's not just Mr. Murphy or Ms. Stephanie. We have a full team in uh, room 1104, just as you see Ms. De Young, uh, who worked diligently to put to, uh, together this evening uh, program. So with that, on behalf of uh, Stephanie, Melinda, myself, and Ms. Castillo, welcome to the North Campus. Okay, I have a simple task for you. You see your program? Can you guys please sign the face pledge with your name? And later on, just be ready to recite. Okay? Okay, now I would like to welcome one of our first year students with a song selection, Miss Lanice Martin.
Outside, so it feels uh, like if it's afternoon. But uh, it's great to be here at, at Miami Dade College. I have a special place in, in my heart for this college. And when I look in, into this crowd today, I mean, you're all uh, representative of, the, of what this community is all about. But more importantly, what excites me is the amount of parents uh, here, because I really feel that parenting, uh, make it your parents, a guardian, your grandparents, whoever it may be, is really the corner, cornerstone of our society. So for, for most of you taking your time to be here today with your children, you know, thank you from the bottom of my heart for doing that because I see it every day, uh, the important role that that plays in, in, in being great examples to, uh, to your kids, to your, to, your, uh, to your grandkids, whatever it may be, so thank you all. So Miami Dade College, I, I attended Miami Dade College way back when, right? <laughs> North Campus, my first day of college was right here in North Campus and, and I was very nervous, but at the same time, very excited. And some of the relationships that I made back then are still uh, my friends today. Uh, Dr. Anna Ward uh, was one of my first teachers, her first professors here in Miami Dade College. And I believe she's still here as an administrator and as, a, as an adjunct professor. And she was amazing. And I'll tell you how, how you create those bonds forever where Dr. Anna Ward really inspired me to get involved in, in local service and, and public service. She was a, a, a mayor of her own city of El Portal way back when. And just not too long ago, I was making some changes to, to one of the county ordinances uh, having to do with transportation. So I go to the meeting, and I'm, I'm standing there, and I'm about to speak. And the chair of the meeting is, is Dr. Ward. So let's just say the item passed uh, unanimously, because she remembered that I was her, her student. But that, those are the type of bonds that you create here in, in Miami Dade College. Every part of our society in, in South Florida and in this nation, being the largest public university, in the entire uh, United States, it's it's touched by Miami Dade College. Uh, my 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 actually my insurance agent was one of my professors here too, who's still a professor here, uh, Eloy Velasquez, and and these are folks that every day I interact with, and the bonds and the discussions that always happen uh, revolve around Miami Dade College. So I want to tell you all a little bit about about myself. When I came to college, I, I wanted to be a marine biologist. I, I wanted to go into a different field. I had an issue, I, I went out boating for the first time and I realized I was, I get seasick, right? I had uh, seasick and so that was over with. I couldn't do it, it didn't work. Uh, so I really became, because of Dr. Ward, because of Eloy, Professor Velasquez, who I see him all the time still in Miami Lakes, I really became enamored with the art of politics. Everything we do revolves around politics, from the funding that the university gets, from the, the vehicles you drive, from the paves the roads, from the street lights, I mean, you name it, everything revolves around that. So that's where I became enamored, right here at Miami Dade College, right here at North Campus. I, I really started loving uh, 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 politics, really public service. So 2006 rolled around, I was 20, 21 years old. I, uh, I applied for a job in the state legislature. 
and, and I got the job, uh, which I was an aide to a state representative. I did that for about seven years in the state capitol, and, and I always remembered my experiences here at Miami-Dade College. Uh, uh, Dr. Padron will go up to, uh, to, to, to Tallahassee, and he's an incredible advocate for you all. I mean, the amount of work that he puts in to make sure that you all are doing well and, and have the resources that you need to succeed is, is incredible. So I really work hand in hand with him, with, with everybody throughout Florida to, to do that. After that, I, I really said, you know what, it's, it's time to make a change. It's time to make a change in my community, and I'm tired of talking about it, right? I'm a big believer. You're either, you're either part of the solution or you're part of the problem. And I, I, I know some folks don't like hearing that, but it's the truth. You know, I, I get too many folks on a daily basis that complain about things, and I tell people, well, fix it. And that's how I felt, and that's why I ran uh, for public office. I, I ran against a 14-year incumbent. Everybody thought I was crazy. She had the governor's support, or Jeb Bush at the time, had the entire Republican apparatus in Miami Lakes. They thought I was going to lose. I knocked on 5,000 doors, and we won. We, we shocked the establishment. We won. We started to change the culture in the town of Miami Lakes. Uh, then the mayor's race came up, and, and I had uh, a choice. Either run for, for my seat, my council seat, run opposed, right, do the easy thing, or you know what, stop talking about it and, and be about it. Go run, change it, make the change yourself. So I decided to, to go for it. I resigned uh, from the city council and I, and I filed to run against the founding mayor of Miami Lakes and, and the gentleman who was there uh, right before me. Uh, and it was a tough election. People again thought I was, thought I was crazy. They, they thought I was gonna lose. But I said, you know what, I really believed in myself. I really believed in, in the vision of our community. I believed in, in the foundation that I gained here in Miami Dade College. And that's, that's why I did it, knocked on another 4,000, 5,000 doors, uh, and we were successful. We shocked the world, we raised the most money in Miami Lakes history, and we won by the largest margin in, in Miami Lakes history, which was close to 80%. And again, folks look back on that, look back four or five years, and, and you try to plan ahead, and, and nobody could ever see something like that. But if you start noticing, if you believe in yourself, and you have that drive, the sky's the limit. And I'm, I'm a perfect example of that, I'm a product of the school, and somebody who grew up believing in that. So. Um, I want to hear what you're all about, so I, I would love to have a dialogue with you all. I would love to get some questions, because I know you all as freshmen, as, as your first orientation, you guys are, are, are a little jittery, and, and I'd love to, to help you all uh, understand, see, see it from my perspective, and, and I'd love to hear from you what's important uh, for, for your education, how I could be of service. So I'd love to hear from, from some of you all. Who wants to break the ice? Listen, you're all, you're all gonna have to be asking questions in college. I'm trying to help you. Know, yes, there's a microphone somewhere. Sorry. So I, I would always think about what I, what I tell people. I'm the first, when I get emails from somebody uh, complaining about something, like I had, I'll give you an example. I had somebody the other day who, I give out my cell phone number to every single resident in Miami Lakes, 33,000 residents in my community. Uh, everybody has my cell phone. I put it on social media, put it everywhere. I get a text message on Saturday. Uh, somebody sends me a picture of a, of a, a deceased iguana, an, an iguana right in their lawn. They go, Mayor. You need to get somebody out here and pick it up. <laughs> pick it up. I was like, listen, you can try to call 311 or you can go get a garbage bag, a Publix bag, a sedan, whatever you want, and put it in there and throw it away. They didn't like that answer, but that's how I felt. I go, if I'm going to tell people that, if I'm going to tell people to be part of the solution in our society and to stop complaining, then I have to do it. I couldn't sit back and, and, and live with myself thinking that I just – you know what, got a free ride on the city council again and not make that change. So now a lot of the changes uh, that you see at, at, at City Hall are due because of that election. So, and, and if I wouldn't have done it, a lot of these uh, differences that have been made in the last two years wouldn't have happened. We've, we've gained about $12 million in grants. It was the largest amount in town history. Uh, we put all of our meetings on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We're out there all the time talking to people, being transparent. I have Saturday office hours, I have mobile office. We go around to people's homes. So. These are the types of things that created trust, but I decided to do it because I, I was tired of, of, of complaining, right? You can't just sit back and say, hey, I don't like this, I don't like that. Well, go do it, go, go change it. And, and that's exactly why I ran and what inspired me to run. And, and, and regardless of what you all wanna do uh, with your lives, that's the same attitude that you should have. You know, any, I'm sure you guys see things that you can make better, make changes. I mean, don't talk about it, just go do it and you'd be surprised uh, what you have in you.
Hello. Um, I have I have a, a really big problem with public speaking. Do you have any um, tips or tricks to overcome that? Okay. So I I was believe it or not that was one of the first classes that I took here. I think it was uh, public uh, the speech class. Um, and I would get really, really, really nervous about speaking in, in front of folks all the time, and I, and I couldn't do it. But you know what I started thinking to myself? I was like, who cares? Who cares if I make a mistake? Who cares? You know, I, as much as I want people to like me, but at the end of the day, if I can communicate and get, and get the words out that I, that I want out there, it doesn't matter to me what people think about me or, or think about what I have to say or if I make a mistake. I mean, it's okay. You, you can't be afraid to make mistakes in life. And, and Michael Jordan, I'm a big Jordan fan, even though LeBron James, to me, is the greatest player of all time. Uh, jo Jordan, Jordan, uh, I'm, I'm a Heat fan, so I love LeBron. Uh, uh, Jordan would always say, I mean, you, you have to take, take the shot. I mean, you're only going to make it if you, if, you, if you take the shot. So the same way with speaking. I mean, don't, don't be afraid uh, of getting criticized. Don't be afraid of making a mistake. And, and if you make a mistake, it's only once. You learn from it. You learn from your, your mistakes, but don't be afraid of that. And, and that's what made me a lot better in speaking in front of crowds because I got to the point that I just, I was like, you know what, if, if I mess up, it's not a big deal. I'll learn from it. We'll move forward. Um, and that really helped me, kind of understanding that if I get the words out of my mouth that I want to get out there and, and talk about what I, whatever I want to talk about, I'll continue to improve. And, and that's, it's worked for me. So that's my, my, uh, my perspective on that. Yes, sir. Hello. Um, I would like to ask a very deep, well thought question. If there was one way any politician, any person in the political state could do, what is the one piece of advice that every politician must follow, whether it is a president or a city mayor? What's the biggest piece of advice you could give? Great question. Great question. Look, I, I tell folks, I mean, you, you want to be successful, be it in, in politics and be the president and, and do whatever you want to do. I mean, you have to be genuine. And, and I think we don't get enough of that, right? And that was a great question because you don't get enough of that in, in public service. You don't get enough of that uh, on TV. Everywhere you look, people aren't genuine. And I think folks are, are, are they want, they're hungry for, for people that are genuine, people that are like us. You know, you, you watch these, these, these TV ads on television watch debates and it's all scripted it, it's all fake you know and, and I think that is my one advice uh, to, to folks getting into public service or, or, or anything else you know be genuine a anything you do just just be real I mean at the end of the day be real and, and you'll be successful um, because there's a lot of stuff out there and, and on both in both sides all over the place it's all scripted it's not real one thing I started doing to change uh, the way that, that we do business in the town of Miami Lakes I like to, to, to phrase it reality politics I, I use uh, Facebook Live, Instagram Live, and, and sometimes it's, it's unscripted, but it's real. And, and it's gotten to the point that our residents love it. Our residents love listening to it. They, they love that transparency. They love that type of access accessibility. And, and, and that's the realness that people were looking for, and, and we provided it. And there were times that we said things that they didn't like to hear, but we had to be honest with folks and, and be genuine. So I, I hope that, that, uh, that answers your question. You know, that's, that's my one advice to, to folks just be real. Obstacles in pursuing your goal as a mayor, and how did you overcome it? So, that's a great question. I mean, there were there were several large obstacles. I think that the biggest one of all is, is taking on a, a political establishment. You know, something when people are used to the same thing uh, for so long, it's it's hard to change uh, minds, right? It's hard to change people's minds. So I really focused on changing people's hearts. You know, knocking on their doors, talking about them, talking with them about the future. But that was. The, the biggest hurdle was that, the, the, the culture change at City Hall. We had a, a, a City Hall and a, and a government that wasn't transparent, that, that wasn't accessible to its residents, uh, that people were used to the way that business was being done, uh, behind closed doors, doing things that, that, that weren't appropriate. I mean, the town of Miami Lakes, our brand, our name was in, in the mud uh, for a long time, and it was, it was difficult to, to surpass that because people were doing the same thing for 16 years, and, and changing that path was, was, was tough. I mean, there were days that I would get attacked 
uh, left and right. I'll, I'll tell you all uh, something, and, it, and it's terrible because my, even my parents were, were almost crying about it. I mean, there, were, there was a mailer with me because we started getting a lot of momentum. They sent out a picture of me to every single town, house in the town of Miami Lakes, like if I got arrested, right? They, they, they got my, my head shot and they put, they put it on mailers everywhere and they said, don't vote for Manny Stitt because he's not good and they put it with, a, you know, and those are the, the, the type of difficult days where you look around and, and listen, it's all worth it at the end of the day because you're doing good, but you're gonna have to go through some difficult days and, and it was that, it was taking on an establishment that didn't wanna be, didn't wanna change, didn't wanna be transparent, didn't wanna uh, listen to its residents' needs and, and changing that culture uh, was very, 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 very difficult. You can see I don't have uh, too much hair left, and that that was uh, that was uh, that was, uh, that was part of it. That type of stress, um, but it, it was that just changing a culture. Sometimes when we come into organizations, we all want to change the world, and, and you all can, but but you got to be willing to take the hits, and you got to be willing to get into the arena, whatever it may be, and, and take the hits because to change anything, to make anything better, uh, you're gonna upset somebody, and and that's okay. You got to be okay with that. So I hope that answers. Question. Okay, right over here. Okay, so you were talking about all the obstacles that you went through. Um, did you ever doubt yourself? The, there, there were very difficult days. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Very difficult days where, where, where you had everybody in, in, in the political establishment uh, uh, talking bad about you, bad mouthing you, and, and you sort of, as a human being. I mean, you don't, you don't like that, right? As a human being, you want to walk into a room and, and, and have everybody you know, be happy with you, be cool with you. And I think you all don't want to walk into class and have folks look at you and say, hey, I'm, well, you know, what's going on? Talk about it. And that, that happened to me for a while there. I mean, changing that, and, and, and I had, you know, luck, have a lot of faith in God. I would pray about it a lot. My family is, is a very close-knit family, and, and they, they showed me uh, a lot of support. But, but, but yeah, they were, they were very difficult days, and, and I had to take those hits, but that was part of the process. When I first got in, it was that question, you know, is it, is it worth it? Should I just gone the easy route uh, and won re-election on the council seat, or should I have ran for, for, for mayor and, and, and had all these issues? Because I had folks uh, on social media, everywhere, you know, bashing me, making, making up things about me. And as a, as a human being, forget about it as an elected official, as a human being, it's not nice, right? It's not cool, right? You, you, you don't want that, 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 that type of... Uh, that energy, negative energy, right? But at the end of the day, we're all magnets. And, and Steve Harvey, uh, even though he messed up, was it the Grand and the Oscars one time? Steve Harvey, uh, great comedian, and yeah, I, I love him. He he would always say, "Look, we're all magnets. Uh, whatever you put out comes back. If you're positive, you know that's what's going to surround you is positivity." So that's what I said to myself. I go, "Look, if, if I'm positive, if I start talking about positive things, you know, we'll start changing that that culture." And, and that's where I started changing that that mindset. But yeah. It, it, were some some difficult dates uh, days during the campaign, definitely. Thank you. All right, all right. That was our last question. So. Well, I appreciate it. I know. I know the. <laughs> I hope. I hope I was a little bit entertaining, right? I hope you guys came. <laughs> Ms. Ms. President, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, the, the, the main theme is we win, right? Yes. Just think about that. We win. We win. You're all winners just by being here today. Uh, just keep working hard. And that theme, let it stick with you because it, it's, all, it's all possible. Don't let anybody tell you that it's not possible, whatever you, you want to do in life. Uh, and you'll, you'll see that you'll be possible because you're already taking the first step being here today and, and your parents, your guardians. Whoever may be here with you all loves you enough to, to take care of you all. So just keep that always in mind when you walk the halls of Miami Dade College. Uh, we win. All right. Have a good night and good luck. Now you know we couldn't just let you leave like that, right? Yes. And on behalf of all of the students here and the 50,000 plus students that are here at the college. It's our showcase of
Okay, and now I would like to welcome our student, uh, our student government associate association on um, president, Ms. Chiquasia Fedrick. So unlike everyone who has come before you today before me, I actually still need a script <laughs> to make a speech in front of people. So it does get better with time though. That's right. So I am your Student Government Association President of 2018-2019. And like many of you here today, I am a first generation college student. So everything from completing my college application to, to finishing FAFSA was frustrating and it was a new experience that I was determined to get through, as you all have done, um, seeing as you're here today. My first se semester at Miami Dade was interesting. I think the shock of my transition caused me to overestimate the difficulty of my courses. Yes, overestimate. A cliche that I encourage all of you to hold on to, because when you overestimate the difficulty of something, you prepare for it ahead of time. You overstudy. You read the textbook in addition to your notes, you cancel plans before they even become a problem. You go beyond the extra mile. So you should remember that. Remember that determination in addition to your perseverance, resilience, and everything else that has brought you this far. It is what will endure every hardship that lay ahead. Many things will threaten that determination. The comfort of predetermined due dates laid out perfectly in your syllabus will convince you that you have more time than you actually do. And you will push things off. The fact that you may be taking difficult prerequisites that, feel, that you feel have nothing to do with your major, because yes, all of us encounter math at some point, even if you're an arts major. The difficult decision to accept working an extra shift at work or cutting your hours to focus on school more. The realization that you need to seek help on an assignment that you thought you had under, under control. And maybe even the initial loneliness of the difficulties you encounter. It is during those times I want you to remember your determination. Remember why you started in the first place, whether it be the first college graduate in your family or to provide a better life for yourself or even to simply prove to yourself that you can do this, that you are capable. Allow your determination to lead you to seek help when you need it. There's an amplitude of services available on NBC campuses, as you all have heard in your orientation. And today's club rush displayed all of the clubs and organizations housed here on your campus. So I encourage you to explore and expand on your interests. Join an initiative and become a part of our campus family. Becoming active in Student Government Association and advocating on campus and within the community helped me find my voice. It reassured me that although I'm not sure where the road ahead lead, will lead me, that I am on the right road and that there are other people who are struggling and going through the same things that I am. I encourage you, my fellow student peers, to use this time to fully explore your potential, your interests, and the changes that you would like to make, not only in your life, but in the lives of those around you. As the Student Government Association, oh, I'm sorry. As the Student Government Association president, I would like you all to know that you are not alone on this journey. You have the power to decide what your first year narrative will be. And if you are determined, you will not only overcome, but excel. With these words in mind, I would like all of you to stand and, re and recite the first year academic and college life experience pledge with me. Raise our right hands. I state your name. Promise to abide by the following pledge to sustain Miami Dade College as an excellent learning institution. Where self discipline is promoted. And where, where I have unlimited opportunity, unlimited opportunity to demonstrate my commitment to succeed. To
be of service to my community, and ensure completion of my degree at MDC. In doing so, I pledge to graduate from Miami-Dade College, to show respect and be kind to all I meet, to study hard, complete my assignments, and be responsible for all matters pertaining to my classes, to make use of all the resources that the college has, Provided to, to help me succeed. Not to be distracted in the pursuit of my educational goals. To follow my dreams. And become all that I can be. Thank you. Give yourselves a round of applause. with the Caribbean Bar Association. The program is called Aspire to Inspire, and it's a weekly series, monthly series, where we bring speakers in on campus who are lawyers, doctors, judges, you name it, on campus personally to connect with you. Let me tell you, they do not get paid to be here, just like Mayor Manny said. They all come on their spare time. So Sharif, on behalf of Miami Dade College, we welcome and thank you, you as president-elect for um, Caribbean Bar Association. So parents, I want to give you all a hand, a, a round of applause as well, because it's because of you, this is possible. Thank you for supporting your students, your children. Thank you. Thank you to our campus administration, also our media services team, um, for being here and supporting our project. Woohoo! Yes, yes. So we're going to end soon. Um, of course, I don't like to say goodbye, but it is not the end. Because you're here, the FACE program offers a scholarship. Yes, we do provide money, not a lot of money. Only one person would get the scholarship, but it is a nice competition to get first year students involved. So look out, be on the lookout for that. Remember, it's also spring registration, so we're gonna get ready for spring, right? Woo! All right. And we also have an initiative where we go into the community and give books to children in Liberty City. We also have Aventura and in Little Haiti. So a lot of you will be a part of that program. And parents, the reason why we do that is because we want our, our students to be involved and engaged in the community. You'll see the light in the eyes of the children that light up when we go out in the community and read to them and give them books. You'll be surprised how many areas have book desert areas where kids do not have books to read. So that's a part of our initiative for the first year program, OK? So now we're going to close. And I would like all of my new students, first year students, to join me on stage. We got, I told you you had a surprise, right? So I need you all to join me on stage. And I would also like to invite Dr. Harrison and Mayor Manny Sims to join us um, on stage. So it's gonna get crowded, so we like photos, right? This is a nice picture that we're going to take, that we're going to put up. And they came right in the front, like right in the front. Camera ready. Parents, we didn't want to leave you out, but we got to make sure we get this picture. This way we remember when graduation comes, who's on that stage? Leave space in the middle for the flags and um, 
our mayor and our campus president is going to be at the front of the podium. So come on, squeeze in, squeeze in. There, go fast. Yeah. So students come up first, and then we're going to have the mayor and Dr. Harrison come up. Um, Charisse. actually more campus first year students, but these face right in the middle. So we're going to make some room for our mayor and um, campus president to come through. We're going to walk them over. We're good. Okay, everybody, we're looking at the center. Okay. Uh, Everyone ready? Here we go. Big smile. Say MBC. MBC. One more. One more. Hold it. Hold it. All right. Thank you very much.